Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This one is going to be another RC driving lesson video, but as much as I want to be at the track racing with this particular individual, I'm not. <laughs> they posted this video online and I thought that it was a really cool track and a really great opportunity to provide some feedback on some stuff that was going on in the race and some adjustments that I would suggest to improve in the future. Uh, Stephen Kelly, huge shout out to you for posting this video up on YouTube, otherwise I wouldn't have seen it in the first place. And a shout out to the track that you were doing this race at. Uh, I believe it's called Chargers RC Club. So shout out to all you guys over there. This track looks awesome. Uh, maybe in some amazing world where I get to travel to a different continent and race, this definitely looks like a track that I would love to race on. Super smooth, super fast, looks like a lot of fun. So I'm really looking forward to jumping into this race footage and showing you guys some of the stuff that I'm seeing here. Real quick before we jump into that, I just wanted to say that I am going to ask you guys a little bit of a question here at the end of this video, it's something that's pretty important. So for those of you that are going to stick around, I would love your input for what I'm gonna talk about at the end of the video. But we'll save that to the end. Let's jump into this race and see what we got. Good luck, Robin. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, five. Five. Big track. Looks like a full heat of cars too. I believe he said this is A3. Started in the second position. So we'll watch this first lap and just kind of see, Lucky leads away, get a feel for the track. The turns, and then I'll start three. jumping into some feedback. Line down the looks like plenty of horsepower in that TLR. Lucky out with a nice opening lap. Okay, so so far I can see that the track is really big, it's very fast. Um, it did have what appears to be a big triple there, uh, off to the right from the perspective I'm seeing. Two doubles on the front straightaway. Uh, don't, doesn't look like they're very particularly hard to clear, but there's something important about these that I know I'm going to talk about here in just a second. Bit of a mistake there. That looks okay. good. A little bit of overdriving so there. The so here, before we even get into that next apex, something that separates uh, a lot of the top pro drivers from the guys like even myself or you know just a lot of your locals out there having fun it's going to be how tight you can consistently maintain a line um, I've heard Mikhail Orlowski uh, that carpet assassin uh, Schumacher driver kind of explain it as invisible speed where you don't really know why these guys might be a lot slower but this is one of the areas where it may not look like much but doing this lap after lap after lap is going to equal two tenths, three tenths of a second every single time. And then by the end of the race, well, you have, you know, like 10 seconds of a difference there just because of the tightness of the lines. So I wanted to stop it here because this guy is going to close up and enter into a passing opportunity just because um, Steven here is taking this line a little bit too wide. Steven Kelly. So there you can see he's already a car length a little bit wider than the car behind him. In the lead now, and he maintained that all the way around. All the way even into the next turn. Now I can see that this may be because he's going wide intentionally perhaps to set up this triple. I'm not really sure. <laughs> they kind of get into it. So this is an interesting trade-off because you have this triple here and it seems like the question is do you triple? and the landing slash 180 that follows is very tight after. So that could be very hard to stick because your car is gonna have a lot of momentum after carrying the speed necessary to triple. So I understand the difficulty there. Or do you hold it tight on the corner before, double single, and then you're almost guaranteed to be able to make that 180 tight every time. I'm gonna look at this and say it's probably going to be more consistent to go tight on the 180 before 
and then tight on the 180 after with a double single versus going wide and then potentially wide again, trying to go for the triple. Not really sure if that's what we're looking at here, but just at first passing glance, that's what I'm seeing. A little bit of a traction roll. David Lawrence into the lead. Oh, he gets on the brake hard. A little bit of a racing incident. I don't really know that there's much that he could have done differently. Um, I think that I'm somebody that tends to err on the side of being way too passive in these situations. So he was keeping the pressure on, and if there was an opportunity to pass back immediately, Steven was putting himself in that position. I tend to be on the other side that if cars are being kind of reckless in front of me, I'm going to give them a little bit of distance, especially since this is the beginning of the race, that there's plenty of time after this moment that there's going to be lots more racing opportunities. Uh, not really much of a critique, but just a suggestion. Give them a little bit more space if guys are wrecking in front of you because you still have plenty of opportunity left in the race. Bit of a mess there. <laughs> Damien Daniels. David back on the track. Yeah. Yeah. Damien Daniels in the lead. I'm not really sure if it's faster here in this section to do that double and then go wide right here. Um, Sometimes there are racing lines where you just jump it into flat, into the berm, and then go. That might be fast. I would be curious to see if I could get my car out there myself. I would want to downside this, be on the gas, and keep it tight. I think that that would be faster, but I'm not sure. It might be hard to do this double, so they have to give it all the gas in the world, and then they just overshoot. Um, not really sure. Lucky in second again. Uh, so he did the triple and kept it tight, but he went really wide to do it. Nice. I like that he downsided both of those doubles. See, that's the problem when you jump into the flat. If you don't do it perfectly, the chassis is going to impact and then sometimes it's going to get upset and you lose all of your traction. The car does like a little mini half donut like you just did there. Uh, looks like Damian Daniels out in the lead. Stephen Kelly in the TLR second. David Lawrence in third coming through the... See, again, it doesn't look like he's doing a whole lot wrong there, but I know from experience that if you are going that wide off of the pipe, that's a tenth of a second right there versus if he kept it tight. Um, I will perhaps give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe there isn't as much grip down there because people have been consistently blowing that line and developing a groove away from that pipe. I'm not really sure. But in an ideal scenario, you really need to tighten up that line. I mean, that is just, that's like probably from here, it's at least um, six feet, uh, uh, three meters or so, uh, for all of those of you in the, the metric system. Yeah. Through the speedy oh. burn, now back on him. Yeah. Stephen Kelly in the lead now. Oh, uh, who wants the winner? Oh, no. Fortunate the triple. Getting a bit scrappy out there. Yeah. Steven in first. See, that was better. That was faster. He landed on a little bit. It looked like he caught. So it looked like he caught just on the transition of where the jump was going to flat. And then he initiated a turn right at that moment, and that was way faster. So far, that was the fastest line I think I've seen him take here. Steven in first. Damien Daniels. But then immediately after that, I know it's hard because the car is hard under acceleration, but he needs to drive that car to the left side of this lane and carry this tight all the way around the next section. The fact that he's out in the middle of the lane, I get it, it's safe, it's easy, but I would have liked to see him keep that a little bit tighter, maybe not all the way up against the pipe, but set himself up to be tight around the rest of this section here. Damien Daniels second. Yeah, just Damien staying Daniels wide out there good. like that. It's safe, but it's just not very fast. Oh, thank you. So this is something where it's hard for me to tell from here because it's really far away, but 
as soon as he lands the car right there, he's kind of got his back tires from what I can tell on the peak of that jump, which is actually a perfect scenario for this particular landing with the corner in the next turn. I would like to see him immediately slam on the brakes here. And even in a more advanced situation, if you start that deceleration process to the point where the rear end starts to break free, you can actually initiate some aggressive rotation to get you through this 180. Maybe a little bit tricky with the grip situation in this corner, because I don't know, I haven't driven this track, but this is actually the perfect place to land for that, in my opinion. Either that, or if you're gonna jump all the way to the apex of the corner, it's kind of one or two of those scenarios, depending on your driving style. But then he just blows the corner in that next, that turn. Uh, Steven, I'm not trying to be hard on you, but I just know you're losing so much time in this corner here. Oh, thank you. I like yeah. to hear the polite drivers on the stand. Yeah. It's always nice. Seven. After two minutes, 31 seconds, the top drivers are Steven Hill in first place, followed by Damien. So this looks, so to me, this whole section just looked really choppy. Um, he didn't hit any pipes, he didn't crash. I understand that. But there's kind of like a moment where you want to get some flow in your racing line and you're really connecting everything and it just looks like one big smooth transition. Like if you've ever watched a pro driver before, it just looks like they made the whole track into one line. They're just connecting everything so nicely. But the thing I've seen so far is everything it seems to be you're reacting to every corner kind of separate from the previous or the one that's about to come up next it's kind of like you're driving in the moment which i understand and i don't know how long you've been driving for so so far i would say you're not a bad racer by any means but there seems to be a huge opportunity for you to tighten up lines and to get some flow and this is what Watching this section here, I can really see that. So it's kind of like you turn abruptly, you go straight, turn, straight, turn. And then every time you did that, the car was just kind of dying and it was losing all of its momentum. Whereas if that was a smoother transition into each one, you would have carried more speed and then it would just set you up better for what's going to come ahead. I don't know if there was like wind on this front stretch, but it almost looked like you were hesitant to get on the gas each time you landed on these doubles. Um, there's a couple times where I've seen you so far. This is something that Tom Ritterneck does so well. And if you've ever watched him in person, he's a, he's a driver for TLR. There's a lot of momentum to be gained and made on the landing of a jump or just landing in the flat. If it's done correctly, you can basically bind up the car so that it only has one option to drive forward. Um, basically what you wanna do and what you'll hear a lot of pro drivers do is they get the car to kind of scrub the face of the jump or whatever's gonna be appropriate as far as takeoff and trajectory. And then right before they land, they will rip that throttle and get that car to basically go like from something like this to just absolutely smash this rear end into the ground because then all of that force is basically giving the tire no option but to grab really hard and drive forward versus if you just kind of land nicely and then just accelerate after and it's kind of two separate processes you're really not driving the car forward so that time going down the straightaway it's kind of hard to know this I could potentially be wrong he may be on the gas pretty hard or as hard as he could be but I just know from what I've seen a lot of the pro guys do and what I try to do myself is especially on a straightaway like that is get the car to be a little bit nose down and then just absolutely get that thing to drive and smash that rear end into the surface so that it drives forward as fast as possible. Burn portion. So I know that it's probably a little bit to do with the marshal blocking the apex of this corner, but you can see it right there. The car behind him took a much tighter line and should have continued that tight line into the next corner. But he's just really missing out that he, so instead he kind of drives out here, he's in the middle of this 
pie turn and then is all the way out here and he's kind of just reacting to everything versus if he would have taken the time to be nice and slow, hit his mark, his apex, right there as tight as possible. He's then shooting from this side, from the right side to the left side. And he'll probably carry a lot more speed and momentum into this corner versus if he's gonna shoot straight out here, he's gonna have to slow down, wait for the car to turn, gather it up, and then start heading in the opposite direction versus cutting from right to left and making this into one smooth arc. It may be harder than what I'm seeing just through GoPro perspective, but that's what I would like to see here or something more like that. So it looks like there might be a little bit of a wind situation or the face of the jump is just making it really hard to keep the nose of the car down. But if possible, the way that I would approach that double before is accelerate super, super hard up until about right there, maybe there, there, somewhere around there. And then I would completely let off of the gas so that then the car would kind of ease itself into the face and it would kind of scrub the surface. So instead of shooting it up, it would ideally try to keep it flat and shoot it forward. It may or may not work this way. Again, I don't know because I didn't race this particular track. But this, the landing is kind of two parts. The car landed, oh good, we didn't crash, and then he started accelerating. Well, that was awful for Damien. Yeah. A lot of overdriving, jumping way out to the left side of that corner. I, I'm not thinking it's going to be the fast line. There's so much time there to be had. Portion front straight. Front straight, portion. That was good. I like that line around that turn. So that situation right there, um, I'm sorry, I don't know if that was a lapper or for position, but backing it up a little bit here. So you're right on the bumper of this guy and you closed in pretty fast. I kind of think to myself that I give it like a couple turns of an opportunity as I'm approaching a slower car that I don't need to wreck myself and I don't need to wreck them. So to kind of just go for a triple to jump over them, it was a risky move, and obviously he didn't get set right, <laughs> and a little bit of a wreck there. I think that was avoidable. If he just would have said, there's someone in front of me, I'm going to double single and wait. It looks like you keep going for that triple and this is at least the third time I think that you've crashed going for it. So at this point I would say that going for the triple, if it's like a tenth or two faster, let's just say it's that and you made it every lap for the entire race, okay, technically it's faster. But seeing that it's sketchy and you've crashed three times, I would have hopefully figured that out in a heat race and said to myself, you know what, it's the main event. I'm going to try to be consistent, not make any mistakes. So I'm going to opt to double single for the entire race unless I hit everything before it absolutely perfect and I have zero traffic around me. That's kind of how I would approach it. I don't know what was going through your head there, but I would say that there seems to be a little bit too high of a risk to keep going for this at this point. So I would hope to say, hope to see you keep it tight on the corner before, double single, keep it tight and continue on. Go. 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 That looks nice. Portion back straight. Portion back straight. Portion that was back. nice. A little bit on the outside, I know that it's it's challenging because it's the downside of a tabletop, so you kind of lose sight of your car there for a split second. So it's hard to see the apex of that 180 coming back the other way because it's going away from you and it's coming back. So it's hard to judge that distance exactly perfect. But I think that in an ideal world, you would want to kind of keep it slow and then 
get that 180 really tight because it basically sets up everything that's about to come after it. So you keep this 180 tight and then I would say you wanna be almost here versus there. Because when you're here, I can be on the gas and driving into and completely set up for this little chicane right here. That was nice. That was a great line. So you hit the triple and then it just shoots you wide after you make it. So I'm really having a hard time believing that that's faster. That step up through the complex into the six packs. It's the leader coming up on you, Simon. That was nice. That was nice. That was nice. See? There. Oh, that section was money. That whole section there was money. You hit every line exactly how I was hoping to see you hit it so far. So good job, Steven. That was really nice. One thing that I, your car hasn't been doing this entire race, but it was a little bit of a concerning moment. <laughs> that little slap bounce that you had there. Um, things to take in consideration if your car is doing that a lot. Immediately, if it's doing that everywhere, ride height's probably too low, but with this track being so fast and pretty high bite, I would say that you're probably already on the verge of being too low. So then you're gonna look at two things. If it's blowing through the stroke and absolutely destroying the spring rate and just kind of just blowing through all of your suspension travel immediately and bouncing like that, um, you may wanna go up on the oil a little bit, or you may wanna stiffen the spring one rate and see what happens. Uh, it's hard to say because it hasn't been doing this the entire race, but when it just did that there, it just made me a little bit concerned that I'd want to evaluate your suspension package and see if it's exactly where it should be for a track like this. So a little bit of time. This is the last See, that was fast. Ah. Nice and tight. Come on. Get there. Oh, single. Oh. Push it over the line. Mm -hmm. in on him. Caution, guys, you got the leader ah. on you. Oh, Stephen makes a little mistake. bit of overdrive in there. I think he was fighting for position there in the last there lap. Win in eight three. Well done, David. So, Stephen, overall, I thought that that was a pretty good race. Uh, you were pretty consistent. A lot of the times you were putting a lot of laps together with just some, some minor overdriving moments, rushing traffic a little bit, and then kind of just getting caught up in some unfortunate events that you didn't really have much to do with. So all in all, it was a great race. My main takeaway would be that you are a little bit reacting to corners in the moment versus thinking of them ahead of time and connecting the previous corner and the corner that's to come and really flowing out that racing line and keeping it tight. Uh, I would say that your car looks pretty good. It didn't seem to be doing too much that I was concerned about except that one moment where you slap bounce the chassis there. But tire package looks like it's working pretty good. It seemed like you had a fairly good amount of grip everywhere around the track. Just some minor tweaks to really dial in that invisible speed that we talked about. And then perhaps on that track or tracks in the future, I would really start to think about that motion of trying to get that car to level out at least or kind of kick up just a little bit so that on the landing, just before you get to the surface, you can really drive that rear end down so that you can get that forward drive going as soon as possible and as aggressive as possible. Okay, so that brings me to the extra stuff that I wanted to talk about with you guys. I really like the idea of starting a kind of traveling workshop thing. <laughs> going to different tracks, getting groups of people together, and then we go through some drills and we just try to improve our RC skills. Maybe a little bit about working on cars while we're there, not really sure. But the idea sounds really awesome and I'd love to do it. However, as you can imagine, traveling and arranging, carrying stuff from track to track and getting that all together would be quite the expense to get it up and running and going. So, hang on. I've started a Patreon. Now, 
I want to immediately say off of the bat that the Patreon is for the people who have continually reached out to me and asked if they can just support the channel because they're super kind-hearted, awesome people and they just want to provide support to what I'm doing, which is great. And I like the idea of doing it just that way. If you feel like you want to support the channel because you think it's cool what we're doing here and you like RC, then great. Hop on board, support. Thank you. What I didn't want to do is set up something where I would have this next level tier of information and keep it behind a paywall. That to me, I just, it kind of seemed to defeat the purpose of this entire channel. I, I started it with wanting to share and open up the information that people may not have or know or understand and share it freely and honestly. Hopefully that makes sense. Patreon, it's only there for people that like the idea of what we're doing, the idea of perhaps doing a traveling workshop deal and they wanna support it in that sense. That's it, no top secret information, just people that wanna support the channel. So link for all that stuff is down below. If you feel so inclined, obviously it's not necessary. If you guys just want to watch, like, comment, subscribe, like always, thank you. And I would be much obliged. Thanks you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.